بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Which Quran do we read? Why do we let these radical imams brainwash some of us? We come here, we sit, we sleep in khutbas, we don't get the message, that's why we miss it. All I need you to be grateful, Allah. Are you telling me Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not protect the, the prestige of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? only living for business. That's all our dream. Let me see who shall save you now. I have no control right now. Look at the armies, look at the power, and I know you will take you your house. You want to see two Muslims, a Salafi and a Tabliki, smiling and making jokes together? They'll be trying to kill each other. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, inahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu. ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله Allahumma rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli Allahumma rabbana atina min ladunka rahmatan wa hayi' lana min amrina rashada Allahumma rabbi yassir wa la tu'assir wa tammin bil khair Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma allamtana innaka anta al-alim al-hakim Sadaqullah Sadaqallahu al-Ali al-Azim wa sadaqa rasuluhu al-Nabi al-Kareem wa nahnu ala thalika min al-shahideen amma ba'd Alhamdulillah All praises and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for once more blessing us to be here today to perform the Salatul Jum'ah and to listen to the Khutbah. Alhamdulillah, all praises and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for choosing us to belong to the Ummah or the followers of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We pray and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his peace and blessings onto the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his rahmah, his mercy upon each and every one of us. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his hidayah, his guidance upon us, to shower his forgiveness upon us, and to shower his acceptance upon us. I once more ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his rahmah, his mercy upon me, by giving me the permission and the ability to be able to deliver this khutbah insha'Allah. I seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help. I seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower unto me the quality of tawakkal ala Allah, the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the taqwa, the piety, the iman, the faith, the hikmah, the wisdom, the ilm, the knowledge, and the ability to be able to fulfill this responsibility, insha'Allah. I put my tawakkal, I put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most sufficient. On a few verses or brief synopsis or brief tafsir or commentary of Surah Alam Nashrah in Shirah, as we say, it's also called and known as Surah Alam Nashrah 
or chapter 94 of the Quran in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Inna al usri yusra that with every inna ma'a with with every usr there is a yusr with every difficulty there is an ease and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say here that bad after difficulties come ease but he says here with that when problems come and difficulties come our path we must not become frustrated we must not give up we must not lose hope in Allah we must always remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that with difficulties come the solution the answer the ease the comfort actually the Mufassirin and the commentators have said looking at this from a more optimistic point of view it is not just that with difficulties come an ease or a solution or success but sometimes the difficulties are the means towards the success Allahu Akbar the difficulties are the pathway and as we were saying last week we are sometimes lost into pondering over the difficulties the problems and we do not see the solution we do not see the success by this difficulty you know, it's like going on the road and there is a bump and you just drive in. But up and you went up the bump. So you look at the rough ride and that could be very frustrating. But in addition to going and then suddenly it's a bump, we look at the rough ride, but we do not look at the height we go up. You go up. And if you're driving very fast, you skip a few feet, the car will miss. So you're really advancing, you're really going up, but you don't realize it. Because the little shake-up had our concentration in a different line. Or it's like times and things are going fine, and then suddenly things get narrow. But that's like a tunnel. The little problems and difficulties that we are going through do not only look at things that have become narrow, because that narrowness, we could look at it as a tunnel that we are now going through where there are more light outside. So don't just look at this here, look at the success over there. And something has always fascinated me when I was much younger. <laughs> Looking at a mountain while you drive is a very interesting thing. If you drive and you look at a mountain and you're on the road and you're heading up to a mountain, subhanallah, when you're down in the valley and you're heading to this big, massive mountain, it looks so big, it looks so massive, it looks so impossible to be at the top there. And as you drive and you go and you go, you're up there and you don't even realize it. And then when you get up there and you look down there, you see what a fine little tiny piece of road you were really on. Isn't that interesting? When you were on this tiny road, that mountain looked like, wow, impossible. When are we going to reach up there? How are we going to reach up there? Is it possible to be there? And lo and behold, you are up there. So very easy. I don't know how many of you 
I love mountains. I love to see mountains. I love to drive up mountains. That's why it always fascinated me. I remember when I was about 16 or 17 years of age and I was in India studying. I took about 15 boys or 20 boys and we just took some bicycles and we decided we're going to ride. And we rode and rode until we saw a mountain. Well, we couldn't ride this bicycle up the mountain. It was too steep. We left the bicycles down beneath the mountain. There was a little masjid somewhere there in um, South India. And just decided to go up the mountain. So much in love and going up the mountain, night took us and we could have never come back down until the next day. By then, police and the entire school and everybody were looking for us all over the place, wanting to know whatever happened. The shop that we rented the bicycle from, they also reported it to police. 15, 20 boys took the bicycles and disappeared. So that mountain history came back into my mind. But the point I was getting at, brothers and sisters, you look at this mountain while you drive and it looks difficult. This part, that's how difficulties and problems are in life. If you only look at it big, like a big mountain, and it's hard to get over it, would I ever get over it? Would I ever be there? Would I ever overcome this problem? As long as you look at it like a big mountain, it will never happen. You will stop right where you are. And as I was saying, Be'ithnillah, when you get up on that mountain and really look down where you were driving, sometimes you can't even see the road. It looks like a track. So it shows how when you get over that hurdle, how where you were were really, more, were really tiny, and much insignificant to when you really cross this hurdle. There is more success. There is more vision. There is more to gain. So don't let things stop there. And that's how the world works. That's how life runs. We don't stop. We don't shut down. Another interesting article, and that's what we were talking about last week. Allah always has an ease, a solution, a success to our problems. We don't see it. We are lost in looking at this big mountain and we cannot vision the success of when you get over that mountain, how big are the pictures? You know, it's like a guy driving a motor car and suddenly you get a flat on the 95. What are you going to do? You get a flat, you pull aside, you're going to sit down and cry? What are we going to do? Sit and cry? Shout? Whine? Quarrel? Argue? Call the company, the Toyota, or the whichever company car you have, and quarrel with the people? They gave you a bad tire? What are we going to do? You're going to just sit down? Do we just sit down? If you don't know about motor car or changing a tire, you'll probably go in the in, 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 go in the car, get the manual, start to read it. How do I change a tire? Some people don't even know where the tire is. Do you know? Some people got motor cars, they don't even know where the spare tire is. And some people know where the spare tire is, but they don't even know how to get it out. And then they don't even know how to put it on. Or probably put the car up, take that out and put this on. As simple as that. Back home in the third world countries, a lot of people knew how to change their tires. In America here, a lot of people don't even have a clue. So now what are you going to do when you have that problem? Think about it. What are you going to do? Just sit and cry? Shut down? Commit suicide? No. You're going to go get the book, read it. How do I do this? How do I, what should I do, not do? Because if you don't do the right thing, you may jack the car up and the car will fall down and that's the end of things. Or if you can't, you will call someone for help. And that's how simple it is. And the problem is solved. But as little as a tire problem, an, a, an ignorant person who has no clue how to change a tire could be a very, very frustrated person. A young driver, who, a girl, well nowadays the boys also have the same problem. But a young girl who now started to drive, she will start to cry. Like if the whole world has come down. We've got to get up. For you and I, who have been driving for many years, it's neither here nor there. But for different people, 
different problems look bigger or smaller based on their condition and experience. You see, if you have had experience with this problem, it will be insignificant and very small for you. If you have never had a, an experience with that problem, that problem is going to be like a mountain. It's going to be very difficult. But that's why you go into the manual and you read and try to solve the problem. So similarly, from the spiritual point of view, so I, I, I'm not going to get back into the details of that surah chapter 94 that we spoke on last week, Allah. but as I normally remind myself and you, those of us who are not here, you got the topic on the CD, you can get it after Salah, inshallah, uh, with difficulties, come and ease and solution. That's the topic. You can get that. It's free. And we always tell you, you could donate towards Al-Hikmat so we could continue to make these copies free and distributed, inshallah. So that was with difficulties come and ease. Today, bi'ithnillah, with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we want to remind ourselves a little bit in the second khutbah in the next few minutes as to how do we console ourselves and how do we strive towards solving this problem inshallah one is to know there is a problem and one is to know what we should do when we have the problem because everybody today know their problems but how do you solve the problem is another thing so in the second khutbah bi'ithnillah with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we want to remind ourselves on what Allah says about how we solve problems. And we get this stress, this depression, this frustration out of our hearts and out of our minds, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah. Or paradise without reckoning, insha'Allah. Wa akhir da'wan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Why do we let these radical imams brainwash some of us? We come here, we sit, we sleep in khutbahs, we don't get the message, that's why we miss it. All I need you to be grateful. Alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiruhu wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi wa na'udhu billahi min shuduri anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina may yahdihillahu falamudillala wa may yudlilhu falahadiyala wa nashhadu an la ilaha illallahu wahdahu la sharika la wa nashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh once more, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessing us to be here today. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his peace and blessings onto the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once more to shower his mercy, his guidance, his forgiveness, and his acceptance upon each and every one of us. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide me and shower his mercy unto me and give me the ability to continue with this second khutbah inshallah i seek allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's assistance i seek allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower unto me the quality of tawakkal on allah the trust in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the taqwa the piety the iman the faith the hikmah the wisdom the ilm the knowledge and the ability to fulfill this responsibility, inshallah. I once more put my tawakkal, I put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most sufficient. In the Holy Quran, very, very, very well known verse. We hear it all the time, all the time, from Surah Baqarah. And most of the time, you really hear it, and why I say all the time, most of the time, you hear it when someone passes away. 
Yes, death alone is not a problem. Listen, death is the end of problems. Come on. Death is the end of problems. Death is not a problem. Death is the process of life. Death is part of the journey of this life. We were once upon a time in the wombs of our mothers. And then we came out from there and we came into this world. That's another trip and journey. And then the soul leaves this body and the body goes into a hole. But the soul continues. So death is a process. Death is not the end of the world. Death is not the end of everything. But again, we look at death as the end of everything. See how our mission and vision is wrong? But while living, we all have problems some way or the other. We must have some kind of problem. Job problem, business problem, financial problem, domestic problems. Husband problem, wife problem, children problem, all oh, neighbors, co-workers, classmates, roommates. We all have a lot of problems while we're living. But how do we handle these things? And that's what I was saying, but isn't it, uh, a lot of times we recite this verse only when someone passes away. But this verse is not only for when someone passes away. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in Surah Baqarah? Verses number 155 to 157. And if you don't remember, again, you can take the CD after the khutbah, inshallah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Walanabluwannakum bi shay'im min al khawf. Subhanallah. Very interesting ayah. Allah says, and we will test you. And we will try you. وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُورِ وَنَقْسِمْ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ We will try you. We will test you with things of fear that you'll be afraid of. Different people have different things you'll be afraid of. Some people are afraid of snakes. Some can play with snakes. But Allah is saying things of fear that we'll be frightened about. We might be tried with hunger. People will be tried with poverty, with hunger. Sometimes you don't even have to be poor to be tried with hunger. You just go home and food is not ready. And that could be a test. Some people turn a beast. You go to Red Lobster and they didn't bring your food on time. You're paying for it. You're wealthy. You have money. You're there. But you're not getting the food in time. You're going to get mad. You're going to start a quarrel with the people. It happens. So you don't have to be poor to be tried with hunger. Right? Some of you probably hungry right now. Also. Half. Dure. Fear. Loss of wealth. Hear what Allah says. وَنَقْسِمْ مِنَ amwal, And you could be tried with the loss of wealth. There are a lot of people with the financial problems in America right now. There are a lot of people who have been tried with the loss of wealth. And you know the Arabic word is so interesting. نَقْصَ And in Urdu we say, بَهُدْ بَرَا نُقْصَانْ هُوَا بَاي كَرُبَارْ مَيْ بَهُدْ بَرَا نُقْصَانْ you know, you say in Urdu, in my business I have some serious nuksan, meaning really losses. People say loss, trouble, and what? Yes, it's losses. Allah says, and you will be tried with losses in your wealth, in your fruits, in your productivity, whatever is our thing, your career, your profession, whatever, the nine yards. But hear what Allah says after that. He also gives the answer in such a very beautiful way. وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ And he said, but let it be known that I want to tell you 
That if you have patience, if you have patience, I want to let you know, Allah says, there are glad tidings and good news for you. So one of the solution and how you try to start solving this problem, number one, Allah says, have patience. Actually, if we go into the ayah before, ayah number 153, hear what Allah says. Very well-known verse again. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sta'inu bis sabri wa salah. Inna Allah ma'as sabirin. You see, a lot of times we only say these things. Allah is telling us that all ye who believe, have patience. So when you have a problem, in, our, in your life, in our lives, begin patience. In Allah Number one solution is to understand Allah is with those who have patience. Allah has promised me this difficulty that I'm going through, this problem, this suffering, this pain, this grief, this hurt. Allah is saying, you don't worry. I have better news for you. Allahu Akbar. And he says, I want you to have patience. And I also want you to pray. So you don't just sit and have patience and lock yourself up in a room. But you get up and you pray. Some people when they have problems, they say, Sheikh, I so have frustrated it. I don't feel like praying. I'm saying, well, you I don't want to heal the problem. Didn't you know it happens? I'm so frustrated, I don't feel like praying. But that is Satan now. That is no excuse. You have to break the back of the devil... Because Satan wants you down. Satan wants us down. Allah is saying you have patience. Don't go in exile and depression and frustration. Yes, we are human beings. We'll have pain. We'll feel sorry. We'll cry. We'll have grief. Yes, Allah is saying you will. But how do we overcome that? Last week we said in the khutbah there is an ease with a difficulty. Today we are saying bi idhnillah. Allah says what to do now. He says start patience and then uh, salah. Go and read Turakat salah. Allah, I have a problem. Nobody could solve this problem. And you are my creator. You are the creator of the world. My problem is in your hands. That's what Allah wants. And you ask Allah, talk to Allah in your salah. Allah, this is what I want. And Allah, if what I want does not please you, then Allah, remove it, please. Because whatever pleases you will be pleasing to me. But if I want what I think pleases me, and it doesn't please you, then that's no pleasure for me. So I want you to remove this suffering and give me what pleases you. Because that is what is going to make me happy. And I, or you, we got to pray. That's number one situation. Don't just forget about it. And whine and dine and expect President Obama to come and help you. And the commissioner and the mayor and everybody else. No, Allah. You see, today, a lot of times, we try, we want we wish to obtain everything in the world. But brothers and sisters, all these things in the world, who owns it? Allah owns it. Why are you going to ask for this, fight for that, cry for that, when the owner of that is Allah? And if you had this and you lose it, who is the owner of this? Allah. So if this belongs to Allah and Allah decided to take back your husband and Allah decided to take back your wife and Allah decided to take back your children and Allah decided to take back your wealth and Allah decided to take back our business and Allah decided to take back this and that then those things belong to Allah. And Allah has the choice to take back whatever he wants whenever he wants and however he wants. That's the bottom line. And if we could put that in our heart, 
iman and faith and trust and tawakkal in Allah, then that's one level of frustration off our mind. Because you cannot want to possess this dunya when this dunya belongs to Allah. So if you want it, you ask Allah. If you want something in this dunya, ask Allah. He's the owner. Why go get frustrated and asking everybody else? We go up the wrong ladder. So then we have much more pain. What Allah says after. After saying that we will be tested and tried with loss of wealth, grief, sorrow, pain, problems, etc. He says, however, when you've been tried with all these problems and we have been tried with all these difficulties, this is what Allah expects us to do so that we would be rewarded. Another point, we already spoke of patience, prayer. Hear what he says here. الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُسِيبًا Those who would say when they are afflicted with a problem or a calamity or a difficulty and I want to help myself in understanding this better. Those who when they have a loss of money, wealth, job, family, problem, whatever it is. This is what Allah said. Alladina either asabat hum musiba. And when you are hit with this problem and difficulty, Qalu inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Subhanallah. As I said, Allah earlier on, a lot of us only recite Inna Lillahi wa Inna Ilayhi Rajun when someone dies. That's when you normally hear this. Because that's a monkey see, monkey do thing. You only hear people recite it when somebody dies. But this ayah, we should be reciting even when the tire gets punctured. Inna Lillahi wa Inna Ilayhi Rajun. This beautiful spinning of my wheel shut down. Well, it was from Allah and it's gone. You see, don't only recite this. This is a command from Allah in the verse. That by reciting this verse, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajun, by reaffirming our faith and our iman, ya Allah, I have lost this, I have lost that. Whether it be family, whether it be self, whether it be wealth, this came from you. And I, and we, and that belong to you. And we, our return is to you. When we put that trust and that faith and that belief and that tawakkal in Allah, hear what Allah says. Those who say that we belong to Allah and to Allah is our return, or our things that we lost belong to Allah and to Allah is the return. You know, question why, yeah? You know, when your child dies, the first thing people say, why me? Why me? Why my husband got to die? Why my wife got to die? Why my son or daughter got to die? You don't question Allah. That is haram. That is haram. See, we make a lot of insignificant things haram around us. Everybody making haram haram. You don't question Allah. Don't. A musibat, a difficulty, life, job, family, work, wherever. All of us have some kind of problem somewhere. Here the reward for saying this. And having this faith. And trust in Allah. Ula'ika alayhim salawat. Ula'ika alayhim salawatum min rabbihim. Allah. Salawatum min rabbihim wa rahma. Wa ula'ika humul muhtadun. Allahu Akbar. You could want it better than that. Allah says, those people who turn right back to Allah and put all that trust and that faith and that grief and that suffering in the hands of Allah with that faith, ula'ika alayhim salawat, unto them will be salamat, salutations, blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want more promise than that? Is anything could be better than that? All the friends and all the 
uh, counselors and all the doctors and all the people will give you all kind of nice words and don't worry and have no fear and be happy. All that is words. This is a promise. La tabdila li kalimatillah. Allah says in the Quran, He does not change His words. He does not go back on His promises. His promise is sure. And hear what Allah is saying. They, Allah has promised on those people His salutations, His greetings, His peace, His blessings. Mirrabbihim. And hear the word Allah says. Have no fear, your protector is here. That's what He's saying here. No? That's why he uses the word him. Let it be known to them that their protector, their law, their caregiver, their pro everything Allah is saying, you have no fear, I have you here. Allahu Akbar. him. Wa rahmah. Not only am I going to send my peace and protection and sakina unto you, but you will also have my rahmah and my mercy. And in addition to that, Allah also promises hidayah, guidance. What is hidayah and guidance? Success, an open path, a bigger way, more answers and solutions to our problems. And I'm saying, brothers and sisters, each one of us got our own problems in our own way. And we got to handle these problems like this. I can't do anything for you and you can't do anything for me. And don't let that just be talk. Let us live that. And Allah will give us everything. Because at the end of the day, we came from Allah to Allah is our return. So everything else are just things. If we came from Allah and we our return to Allah, then everything that comes within that belongs to Allah. And you don't stress and frustrate yourself over it. That's it. Allah. That's the analyze the answer. I wanted to share one or two more ayats and verses on, on, on this perspective. On how Allah has promised this for us. When we really and truly put that faith in Allah when we have difficulties. And we take that method. Don't just sit and say, Sheikh, I want you to pray for me. Brother, you pray for me. And you're not praying for yourself and making effort. I'm not saying don't ask other people for du'as, but you get up and do it yourself. Let us get up and beat our heads. Read the Quran. Turn to Allah. Salah, Quran. And you must also give sadaqah, charity. You know charity? It says that when you give charity, it removes calamities. When you give a charity, it removes a calamity. So you must do. I think we always ask you, donate towards distributing Quran. Donate towards all this dawa work that Al-Hikmat does. Donate. We're trying to do 100,000 drive Quran. Yes, you donate it in the part of Allah. You spread the message. We, whatever you give, it's not to Al-Hikmat. It's not to us, really. It's not even to the Quran and to Allah. It is to yourself. Because Allah will remove some burden and difficulty from your path and make things easy for you do that i want to give that i want. but yes that's nice from the logical logical point of view from the spiritual and practical point of view you're really giving to yourself because allah is clearing problems and difficulties that you can't see down the road and then sometimes you wonder wow i thought i would have been in this problem but subhanallah there's no problem because you didn't realize what good you must have done and allah removed that problem that's how we got to work this thing with Allah. It's all about Allah. It's all about Allah. And it doesn't matter where we come from. Pakistan, Bangladesh, Arabia, America, Japan, China, Trinidad, Guyana. We all have problems in our own way. It doesn't matter if we're rich, we're white, we're black, we're blue. We all have problems in our own way. And you've got to put it in the way of Allah for the answers to come. And to remove the stress and this frustration. That's the only way. It's hard. But it's the better and most successful way. Subhanallah. You know, sometimes psychologically speaking, when you have problems, you think you're alone in problems. But sometimes, as we said in the earlier khutbah, khutbah the first khutbah, most of you were not here. You can get it in the khutbah again after you will hear what we said about that. Bismillah. After Jummah, take the khutbah, inshallah. You see, sometimes when you go through little difficulties, you are able to enjoy life better. Remember the example I gave of the road and the mountain and how you see things in the first khutbah? Take, for example, a wealthy boy. A boy who was born wealthy from a wealthy family. 
and his parents has wealth and he grew up with wealth him having money in his pocket is no enjoyment you know actually he might be fighting his father for more money and more property and more wealth because he's going to look at who has more and how much more he wants he's going to be more greedy but that poor little boy who grew up with no money from poor humble parents when he gets rich and has money he will appreciate money he will appreciate a nice house he will appreciate wealth he will appreciate people who don't have money as well he has appreciate his wealth but the guy who was born in wealth will never understand what it is to be poor and he may not have a heart for those who don't have so you see the benefit when you go through problems and difficulties in life you are technically qualifying and getting a PhD in difficulties you know people go to the university to get a PhD in what medicine law accounts business so you call an eye doctor business doctor this doctor where you will be a problematic doctor not that you are problems but you could solve problems because today all these medical doctors and eye doctors and money doctors they give you more problems when you go by them stuck for a lot. please doctors I apologize that was just a little joke I know we have doctors and lawyers and accountants in the audience that was a joke don't feel offended what I want to say is because of all the problems in the world the of problems you become so seasoned, so experienced that you could now handle your problems and handle other people's problems. So you really a qualified doctor in that field. And that you don't get many of. When you could really help people and help yourself when other people are looking at their big problem, you see it as a little problem. You look at them and smile and say, wow, I was there. And look, today that problem brought me here. With success, that person can't see that. And that's a baraka. So don't look at it as a, something devastating. It's a blessing. It's an opportunity to success. In the other verses, hear what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. And I want to quote these verses before we conclude the khutbah, inshallah. Very interesting. Allah would be very motivating to us when we have problems and difficulties. But do remember before we move on, because we'll conclude, inshallah, after these. When we have problems and we have difficulties, for those of you who came late, chapter 2, Surah Baqarah, verses 155, 56, and 57, Allah has promised, put your trust in Allah, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajun. And the second reminder, do not only read this when someone dies. If this light's cut off, you say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajun. These lights came from Allah. If Allah chooses to take it off, he takes it back. Anything. Get that to be on the lips, in your heart. Because Allah has promised success, guidance, and barakat after. You know, normally, you wouldn't be saying, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajun. You might be using a four-letter word. American style. You see? All kind of, in your own language, you'll be using your letter. Well, I say four letter in English. But whatever country you belong to, you might be using that term. As soon as something happens, tire puncher, like, oh, you're cussing the government, you're cussing yourself, you're cussing everybody. No. You are now adding more blight, as we would say. Difficulty and darkness to your path. Brighten up the path by saying, Allah, this came from you and you took it. Mashallah. Because Allah will now give you something better. Don't block your own path. You know, there is a saying, you must not even make bad dua for your own children. Because if it's accepted, you yourself will suffer the consequences. Don't even do that. Hear what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. In Surah Hadid, chapter 57 of the Quran, I want to quote these two verses before we conclude, inshallah, for motivation to ourselves. Allah says in ayah number 9, it is he, Allah, who sends down unto his servant. What does he send down? He sends down signs. Allah says, it is he who sends signs to his servants. So if we serve Allah, when we're in problems and we're in difficulties, serve Allah, pray, have patience, read Quran, give charity, make dua. What Allah has promised to you and to us, 
He says, That he will send down unto his servant. He will send the clear signs. He will make it very clear, open picture to his servants. The light as to how to get out of darkness. Allahu Akbar. Ayatim bayinatil li yukhrijakum mina dhulumat ila nur. Signs to take you off of darkness towards the path of light. Ayah number 9, chapter 20, chapter 57. These are the verses we got to read to console and motivate ourselves when we have problems. If we believe in Allah. Because Allah says you got to be a servant. You got to be serving Him. You got to put your trust in Him. And He has promised this. Then He says, Allah says, I will give you the light and show you the light away from darkness. Because Allah says, I'm the one who is most kind, most forgiving, and most merciful. And the next ayah I wanted to quote from this very same chapter. Chapter 57, ayah number 28. Hear what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. And when we have this kind of motivation and courage and faith from Allah... Brothers and sisters, there is no problem in the world that will be a problem that Allah can't handle. Because there is nothing like problems for Allah. And I should withdraw that statement. There's what we think is problem is not a problem for Allah. It's nothing. This is something that Allah probably put to lift us up that we can't see. Hear what Allah says. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqullah Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqullah Wa aminu bi rasooli He says those of you who believe and have faith And those of you believers who do your duty to Allah you See what we're saying when you have problems and difficulties Do your duty to Allah Pray your salah, give your charity, do what you have to do. Don't shut down and say, Allah, when I get off these problems, then I will start to give charity and start to pray and go to hajj and fast and do good and start dawah. Don't wait to get over the problems. Do it now. You are servant. We are servants of Allah. And you do your duty to Allah. And if we do our duty to Allah and we have faith in the Rasul of Allah in how he handled problems and difficulties, Listen to what Allah has promised. Yu'tikum kiflaini min rahmati. Allahu Akbar. Allah says, I will give you double reward. I will give you two double rewards. When you do something, you don't only get one thing for it. You get double for it. This is a promise. Ayah number 28, chapter 57. You have a problem, you have a difficulty, you serve Allah, you do what you have to do, Allah will give you a double reward, a double success, better than what you suffered. From his rahmah, he will do that. And here the next promise. He says, and I will also, in addition to giving you double benefits and solution and rewards, I will establish a nur. Those of you who speak Arabic in the audience, hear what he says. Allah says, I will establish a light for you to walk on. Allah is establishing a light for you to walk on? This is no FPL light in a Florida power and light. This is Allah's light for us to walk on. Whether there, you can't see, whether there's no physical light, whether there's nothing, there's a spiritual light that Allah will open for your path so you could see brightly what you are seeing, nobody else seeing. This is the promise. This is Quran. If you have faith, if we have faith in Allah, we'll believe this. And that's the light we want. You might be talking to 40 counselors. They may not see the light. But Allah has given you the light. He will establish a light so we could have a light to walk on. Allah. Like Allah holding a torch and saying, Mera banda, chalo. He fast that say, chalo. You are my servant. Just go. That is the light. Follow the light. It's all from me. 
You don't want nothing better than that, brothers and sisters. And Allah says, Wa yaghfir lakum, wallahu ghafoor rahim He says, and in addition to that, I will also forgive you your sins, and I want you to know that Allah is the most forgiving, the most merciful. So brothers and sisters, time does not permit for us to continue. And for those who came late, you get a CD. Last week we dealt with ease comes with difficulties. Today we dealt with how to get over these difficulties. How to handle this problem. What Allah says about this. And it's so easy. It's all about putting everything in the hands of Allah. You don't have to go to college for this, you know. You don't have to go to university for this. You don't have to get a degree for this. You don't. You probably just have to come here for Juma for it, inshallah. We need to be reminded in you, inshallah. I'll take a copy of the CD. Anytime you have a problem, listen to it. Remind. Let us remind ourselves. Because we need reminders. We, the Quran is a reminder. We come to Juma to be reminded. Listen, whenever you have a problem, read the Quran. Get into these verses. Let it come back into our hearts and minds. And put that faith and trust in Allah. And the path will be there because Allah has promised the light. Double success to the problems. Better than what we were even before the problem. The problem is only a means of getting to the other side of the mountain where things are much bigger and brighter, inshallah. Ya Allah, Ya Arham Rahmin, Ya Ghafur Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Allah. Allah, we thank thee for all the favors and bounties you have bestowed upon us, Ya Allah. We ask thee, Allah, to send your peace and blessings unto the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We ask thee, Allah, to give us that iman, that faith, that trust and tawakkal in thee, Allah. That we can put all our trust in thee and have patience with salah and in obeying thee and doing our duty to you, ya Allah. So you would remove all our difficulties and disasters and calamities and problems from our way. And give us the double blessings that you have promised, ya Allah. The double blessings that you have promised, ya Allah. And the favors and the mercy that you have promised unto us to make everything easy for us in this world as well as in the hereafter, inshallah. Allahumma rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan. Hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa qina azab nar. Bi rahmatika ya rahman rahmin. Inna Allah wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amunu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina maulana Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammadin bi adadi man salla wa sam. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina maulana Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammadin bi adadi man qa'ada wa qam. Wa salli ala jameel anbiyai wal mursaleen wa ala kulli malaikatika al muqarrabin. Wa ala ibadillahi salihin bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin. Ibadullah, inna Allah ya'amadu bil adli wal ihsan wa ita idhi al qurba wa yanha ani al fahsha wal munkari wal bagh. يعدكم لعلكم تذكرون ولا ذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأولى وعز وجل وهم وأكبر الله أكبر أكيم الصلاة. Let these radical imams brainwash some of us. We come here, we sit, we sleep in khutbas. We don't get the message. That's why we miss it. All I need you to be grateful. Allah. Are you telling me Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will not protect the the prestige of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم? Only living for business. That's all our dream. Let me see who shall save you now. <laughs>